Uh, let's talk about 2016, because they don't talk about that enough on uh, cable news, do they? Uh, you guys remember Ralph Nader? He runs for president every couple of years, screws up the whole thing. Maybe Al Gore <laughs> would have been belts. president. C he loved seatbelts, especially mm. in the 70s. Uh, yeah, we could have had Al Gore, perhaps. Who knows? Um, so he came out with an interesting memo outlining 20 people that he calls moderately enlightened rich people, MERPs, uh, <laughs> that he thinks could run for president in 2016, and that might actually uh, be decent. Okay, so here's uh, some of the people on the list. You gotta have Oprah on any list of rich people that are doing things. We got Bill Gates, Ted Turner, former third party New York governor, candidate Tom Galasano, and former AOL chief executive Steve Case. Uh, and let's get, we've got a quote of Nader explaining why he thinks these MERPs could lead us into the future. Presently, only very rich, modestly enlightened people could have a chance to break this introverting cycle of political oligarchy, which unenlightened rich people generally approve of, that sets its own rules, makes its own laws, and appoints its own judges, and even brazenly forces taxpayers to finance its quadrennial political conventions. Uh, Ralph Nader should probably maybe use a period and occasionally in a, in a sentence to explain something that would have been easier for me. A different headshot. <laughs> he definitely could use a different headshot. A little more makeup when he's on TV. Um, all right, but let's not make this about Nader. It is our only chance to break the system, this endless money machine system? Could it possibly be true that a billionaire self-financing his campaign might actually be the one chance we have to get money out of politics, as reverse as that sounds? Well, he wants to crack open the system uh, let somebody else in so that the same people don't get elected and the same corporations don't keep donating, right? Yeah. So maybe having a third party, somebody like a, um, I was gonna say Madonna, I meant Oprah. We can throw her <laughs> on the list, we'll put her on the list too. I mean, honestly, I would vote for Bill Maher or <laughs> Jon Stewart or, yeah or even somebody like Beyonce, because other dignitaries from other foreign countries would love to sit down with a Beyonce and... People would love to sit down with Beyonce. Right? I don't know that she quite qualifies on the billionaire list, but maybe she's on her Someday. way at least, right? Maybe she's the, definitely on her way. Maybe the, the Hova Beyonce total dollar amount when they put them together as the power couple, maybe that cracks a billion. <laughs> yeah. I do think collectively, you know, people running for, for president might you know, be able to collectively raise a billion dollars, so what's the difference? I think the sad part about if you have a, a moderately enlightened billionaire, I think the very enlightened billionaires are the ones who are like, forget politics, I don't want to do well, that. Well, but isn't that the truth? Like, if you were, re forget how much money you have, but if you were really an enlightened person, would you ever want to run for political office? Well, Marianne Williamson is running, and she's, a very enlightened person. I don't even know who she is, so oh, she must she, be very enlightened. She, she speaks a lot about love, and she's more of a like a spiritual leader. But mm. she's running for some seat somewhere right, right. now. So, but um, like Al Franken kind of did that. He cracked it open because it made the media pay attention to him. So I, I think it's less about the money and more about can you get new life into politics. Yeah. Is, is it just a sad state of American politics, though, that we might need a billionaire to actually get money out? I, I, I don't think so. I think the sadder thing is if you are this moderately enlightened billionaire who is going to try and run, you're not going to win the presidency. That is a fact. I mean, I just don't see it happening, even if Oprah throws her, her you know, hat in the ring. Yeah. I think what that accomplishes is what Nader accomplished and what Perot accomplished, which means the person who's actually closest to you on the political spectrum loses because of you. Yeah. So I just think the third Al party Gore. system, Al Gore, right. you know, George Bush, like that is, those are things that arguably lost the election. Any other decisions could have been made, but largely, you know, lost the election for the person who was closest on the political spectrum to the billionaire who ran. Yeah. Or the large third party. So candidate. Oprah doesn't have your vote? So <laughs> if Oprah runs within a party, I think that helps. How but about the picnic party? Like, make it fun. Ooh. I mean, whoever the billionaire is, it's going to be a great party. Yeah, well, that's the thing. We have the tea party. They're so serious all the time and all that. But the picnic party is pleasant, maybe champagne, yeah. something like that. Those, like, $5,000 a plate dinners, like the billionaire puts well, $5,000 no, on your plate. That's pretty you good. Yeah. And I hate that I'm still getting email from 
the Obama campaign oh, asking yeah. me for money. I don't that I don't understand. I'm trying to pay my health care. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, well, they have to usher in the 2014 candidates that he likes too. It's just right, but that's the problem. It's just a never-ending cycle. But isn't also part of the problem here is that we have this like thing where now people are really hating rich people, rightly or wrongly. So the idea of a billionaire self-funded candidate, if Michael Bloomberg suddenly ran for president, wouldn't the populace would hate that, right? Also, the Republican side doesn't need that because the Republican side, a lot of the money comes from corporate interests anyway. So like the business-minded person running on the Republican side, that's not new. Are the Democrats the, not getting the, the corporate money? I mean, isn't it always well, like 52% to 48% or something? like? I don't know. The corporate money is one thing, but I think these moderately enlightened candidates that Nader's mentioning are all, or for in a large part, like, Big Democratic lean. The, what they, what I think he means by enlightened is, is the Democrat, person for yeah. whose whose money they put into politics isn't expecting money to come directly back to their cause or company. That's what he means. Because they by don't enlightened. need it because they're already billionaires. Right, but yeah. there's other people who are just like you know I was, I'm going to give you money for my you know shoelace making corporation so we can have my kind of shoelace go to like every school kid in Atlanta. See, I think it's a good idea to start the conversation about it. I'm not necessarily, I, I don't know if I agree with the title Merp. Right. I think that's <laughs> off putting. Isn't that a very Ralph Nader, t moderately Maybe enlightened, if it's rich people? grand people. or that. picnic. <laughs> yeah, that would have made more sense. Uh, all right, so last thought on this. Can we ever get the money out? I mean, we do some, a story about this every week since we've been doing the show, but isn't the root of this is just the ridiculous amount of money in politics? And you know, I've now presented this question three times, but the idea, even how silly it is, that you'd need a billionaire to come in so that the money could get out. Is there any chance that the system will ever change? No. No. <laughs> yeah, well, no, no. I, I do. I actually think this is elevating the conversation. So. Maybe because democracy doesn't work right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just bring us home. If a politician <laughs> runs who is not for sale, there's someone on the other side who is, and it will kind of activate people to overfund. You know, you get one billionaire running against, you know, 25 billionaires giving to the other side. It's it's tough. I'm yeah. gonna. Um, I think our candidate is gonna be from New Mexico. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because, they're because they're very so much happy. love yeah. and happiness <laughs> there. Excellent.